All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I'm going to talk about one of the Ten Commandments here in Exodus 20. Let me read the first three verses for you. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right? So what that means is there's only one God. There are not two gods. There are not three gods. There are not four gods. There's one God. Now, why is that important? Well, all these videos up here, I'm going to show you that these people teach more than one God. Okay? Uh, these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, this guy, and these guys. Okay. It's insanity all right now I've covered this before but I want to try to do a better job okay so like for example for in uh, 1 Corinthians 8 verse 4 it says in concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing in the world and <clears throat> that there is none other God but one there's only one God now there's you know a lot of examples I can give here but hopefully hopefully there's no question about it right in Galatians 3 now a mediator is not a mediator of one but it but God is one First, our first uh, Timothy two, for there is one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ, Jesus. Again, the Ten Commandments: Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There is only one God. That's it. So, the reason why I think this is important is because um, like for example in Matthew 24 the disciples go to Jesus and ask him what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing Jesus talks about is deceivers take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and it's, it's incredible how many deceivers there are in the world today and it's not like these guys know the truth these guys have been deceived themselves and therefore they deceive others right I mean even the Bible talks about it evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so the deception is getting worse and worse and worse and of course in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 it talks about how except that the Lord had shortened those days there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened that's about deception it's not about World War 3 and getting you know persecuting Christians it's about deceivers the deception in the world is so bad people don't know the truth people don't care about the truth 
I think that's the world that we're in right now. I really do. I honestly believe that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. All right, so let me uh, play just a few seconds of each one of these just to show you uh, the insanity that's in the world today, really. In their case, unbelievers, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers, has blinded Satan. To keep. All right, he just called God Satan. This gentleman here just called Satan God. He just called God Satan. Real subtle, too. I mean, like, no big deal. Now, I understand people forget easy, you know. I'm one of them. Two seconds later, I forget something. So let me remind you again. Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. It's not Satan. There's something wrong with a man's heart when they say... Satan is God. All right, Robert. And he is damning your soul to hell because he is trying to get you away from the gospel of salvation and Jesus Christ. And you know what he is? He's darkness. And he's working for the God of this world to give you darkness. And all I'm trying to do today is just give you the light. All right, so if you wanted to waste your time, listening to this crap yeah, Robert Breaker from 2015 you know hopefully he's changed his mind since then and opened his eyes and realized that Satan is not God of this world here we go again even if our gospel is in some sense hidden behind a veil it is hidden only to those who are perishing. Among them, the God of this world, Satan, has... Right, there we go again. Remember what I just read in Exodus 20? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And this person here is claiming that Satan is God. It's, it's alarming. It really is alarming. Now, I'm not sure I wanted to listen to all this guy here. Let me see if I can get the lucky. The God of this world in so many cases, he's saying the vast majority of this world is not serving the Creator, but Satan. Look around. It, now, if anybody knows that God is God, Paul does. But he's saying that the God of this world in so many cases, he's saying the vast majority of this world is not serving the Creator, but Satan. Look around. Okay. Okay. That's in reference to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Again, he's claiming Satan is God of this world. All right, and then, again, i got questions. Not how in the world anybody listens to a single thing these guys say is beyond me. It's, it's incredible. Well, let's listen. How is Satan God of this world? We're going to answer. What a question. It's here you, you devote your whole entire ministry. You've got online websites, you got a YouTube video, and then you open with this question here. It's incredible. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Satan is not a god. Well, what kind of question is that? How is Satan God of this world? He's not. There's only one God. 
it's not Satan. So this is alarming, really. So let's take a closer look. You know, <laughs> you know again, it this is it's kind of interesting. I can't show you something that's not in the Bible. And what's not in the Bible is this idea that Satan is God. It's not anywhere at all in the Bible. What I can do is show you something that is puzzling. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, this is not talking about Satan. It's rather insane to suggest it is. Again, remember Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There is no other god. There's only one God. It's not Satan. This is talking about God Almighty. Now, there, somebody asked me a question the other day. Why is that lowercase g? That's a great question. I, I don't know why. It shouldn't be. But let's read... Uh, first of all, let's read this. I think it's important to understand the whole the context of the entire chapter. I mean, if you have any doubt whatsoever, unless you're absolutely you got it all figured out, then you don't need to read it. But if you want to grow in understanding, knowledge, and wisdom, truth, then let's read it. Okay. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which have believed which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them for we preach not of ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the light I'm sorry let me try this again always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also, by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed 
day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, so now that we've read that, let's get a little more specific on this particular verse. Now, it's interesting here. Let me go back real quickly. Notice here in verse 2 it says, But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. And that's what I'm doing here today. Renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, as all these people do. Now, again, I, I got to reiterate here. It's not that they know the truth and they're doing it to trick somebody. They've been tricked themselves. Okay. So let's focus on this phrase, and whom the God of this world. Now, remember... Exodus 20, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. So, you can't have a contradiction. There cannot be a contradiction in the Word of God. Alright? That's number one. I mean, if... You, you, there's, look, if you think there's a contradiction, you don't believe the Bible at all. There cannot be a contradiction. And I can get into this. I could spend an hour, two hours talking about how not a single bone of him shall be broken. The word of God cannot contradict at all. And it doesn't. That's the amazing thing is it does not contradict anywhere at all. And in particular here, it does not. we're not seeing a contradiction with Exodus 20. This here is just an oddity. All right? And it's wrong. In my opinion, it's wrong. It shouldn't be little g. It should be big g. Let's look at 50-some translations. And let's see what they say. And I mean, look. There's something wrong with these deceivers when they say God is Satan it should make you question what is going on in this world to where we've gotten to this place where people are printing Bibles that say Satan is God uh, this is one of these reasons why I think uh, we don't, you know, in a, let's see, how do I say this? In an overall sense, um, you know, generally, um, I mean, most people don't realize how bad it is. 99.9% .9 of all people don't realize how bad this world is. But once you see this, hopefully you begin to, to understand that the world is much worse than what maybe we even imagined. You know, you grow up as a little kid and you want to believe everything is good. And, and then you, come, you grow up and you come to the staunch reality that not everything is good. And then I think you, maybe, you know, once you become a believer, you, you start to see how bad things really are. I, I mean, in this world, right? I mean, we need an escape from this wicked world. And the good news is we have an escape from this wicked world, and it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He will deliver us out of this wicked world just as... Moses delivered his people out of the wickedness of Egypt. Guarantee. Okay? Now, the, the X Bible or whatever this is, 
it's calling God Almighty the devil from their standpoint the devil is God and it's unbelievable man it's unbelievable thou shalt have no other gods before me and yet these guys are making the devil out to be God what is going on man it's unbelievable it's alarming really it's almost shocking almost shocking All right. Yeah, hocus pocus and no clever tricks on oh, what is this crap that's not the Bible all right and you notice that as we scroll through here we all these you capitalize Satan but you don't capitalize God there's something wrong here Satan is not God You capitalized it here. The, and Satan is no God. It, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This almost reminds me of when God gave Moses two tables of stone written with the finger of God. Moses had to have been ecstatic, excited, and just overwhelmed with uh, joy to have these tables of stone written with the finger of God and you know a set of rules that we can all live by and abide by and then he walks down from the mountain and he sees all the people dancing around a golden calf and it angered Moses and he waxed hot and he threw down he smashed the Ten Commandments well, we're in this place again, really, where people are ignoring the Ten Commandments. And specifically this, thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. So what are you doing here? Calling... It's not Satan. Satan's not the one God. Satan is not a God at all. So why would you... Why would you make that? Why would you say that? It's insanity. The devil who rules this world has blinded the minds? No and no. That's not true. The devil's not a god. and he, He's not the one that blinds the minds of those who do not believe. The devil doesn't do that. God does that. This is an absurdity. It's sickening, really. But I think it, it serves as an example, really, how close we got to be to the end of the world. When we see this kind of stuff happening, we got to know it's close, man. We got to know it's close. Satan is not the god of this world. That's wrong. The Bible never, ever implies that Satan is a god of any kind. Satan is not a god. I mean, it, it fact, in fact, there is only one god. And it's not Satan. It's incredible. It's incredible, really. So, I want to get through this so we can move on here. I want to show you something that's, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be eye-opening for somebody. Alright, so we've seen enough right so let's go you know why what why does it say why does it say little g well it shouldn't say little g I don't know why there's a little g there I mean it's a good question what why do they do that They shouldn't do that. It doesn't make sense, does it? You know, you just gotta wonder what's going on, right? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. Can you see that? 
I don't know if that's going to help if I blow that up, huh? Look, it actually looks like it went smaller. I could do this here. Hold on a second. I want to make this crystal clear. I want to make this crystal clear. Now, hopefully, you can see that right there. So, all right. So, if you couldn't see it before, oh my goodness! Right there, verse four, in whom the God of this world. See, that's not small G. That's capital G. Right down here, that's a little g. This is a capital G. All right. So, uh, so we see that there's something very strange going on. Very strange. Now you've probably heard me say that uh, even today, when Moses is read. The veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Satan doesn't take it away. God takes it away. All right? There shouldn't be any doubt about it. I mean, what in the world is going on in your mind to think that Satan is going to take the veil away once you believe in Jesus. That's nonsense. Uh, and, and remember what it said here. I better... I know people got short-term memory. I'm one of them. So let's keep this as a reminder of what it says in verse 4. All right, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. This is parallel right here. And oh. Okay, this is parallel. This is uh, talking about the same thing. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. And five verses later whatever in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of which of, of them which believe not right it's talking about the same thing and that should be a capital g capital g in whom the god of this world and that's god and that's jesus jesus is god of this world he's going to judge this world He's going to destroy this world. And he's going to bring us a better world. Alright, so, and, and this is not, you know, standalone stuff. This is from Old Testament, New Testament. Let's go to Isaiah, if I can find the verse here. Let me think. Yeah, there it is, and there it is in Matthew. Alright, so let me... I gotta think of how that's worded here. I'm, I'm not sure. It's gotta be. There it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. There it is. Okay. All right, so let's just scroll through these here. Isaiah 32. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall not, or I'm sorry, shall hearken. They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard or nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O oh God, beside thee, what he has prepared, prepared for them uh, that waiteth not for him. Okay, so that's not what I was looking for. Um, which one of these is it? Oh, oh my. 
my goodness. Did I? Oh, no. Let me think about this. Oh, goodness sakes. I have to. I have to do it this way. I have to do it this way. There it is. Jeez. Isaiah 6. Uh, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. This is God that does all this it's God Almighty there's only one God so it's kinda of silly to say it's God that does it it's not Satan Satan is not a God in Matthew 13 verse 15 for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. I, God, shall heal them. Alright, so I mean it's crystal clear. Really all throughout the Bible. That it is God that opens our eyes. When we believe. And therefore it is God that has blinded the eyes of them that don't see and there really are a lot of examples to give but it should be crystal clear to anybody that really knows anything at all about the Bible that God is in control of it all right? there should be no doubt no mistaking about it and again this is important here this you can't You can't contradict the Ten Commandments. And you, I mean, it's abominable to say that there are more than one God, to say that God was wrong when he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I mean, there's only one God. That's crystal clear all throughout the Bible. And of course, it's Jesus. Jesus is God Almighty. So anyways, hopefully that maybe, maybe helps somebody. Uh, to see that how deceived people are today it's unbelievable man it's incredible Satan is not God of this world there's only one God it's Jesus